As we've been discussing, tomorrow will be the first public hearings in the impeachment inquiry, raising the question, how did we get here? To look back and bring it all into focus are Lisa Desjardins and Yamiche Alcindor. More than a dozen witnesses, thousands of pages of testimony, and a whistleblower complaint that we learned about only in September. It all led to Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi doing this. I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. This has all happened quickly, almost too quickly to process. So we want to take a step back and look at how we got here. Let's start where this investigation began. That letter from an anonymous whistleblower. The whistleblower writes that multiple U.S. officials told them that President Trump pressured the president of Ukraine for his own political gain. He wanted Ukraine to open an investigation into former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden. The younger Biden served on a board of a Ukrainian energy company. The whistleblower says that the president was soliciting interference from a foreign country and sought to pressure the Ukrainian leader to help the president's 2020 re-election bid. This is the core charge by Democrats, led by House Intelligence Chair Adam Schiff. The President of the United States has betrayed his oath of office and sacrificed our national security in doing so. President Trump and his allies, however, insist this is a political attack. This is a witch hunt at the highest level, and it's so bad for our country. There's plenty of rhetoric from all sides, but what do we actually know? Let's drill down on some key dates. In May, President Trump has the ambassador of Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch, abruptly removed from that job. This happens just two weeks before massive change in Ukraine. <laughs> on May 20th, Vladimir Zelensky, an actor and comedian, is inaugurated as president of Ukraine. He pledges to fight corruption in his country, but Zelensky has another problem a continued costly war with Russia over large swaths of land. Zelensky needs U.S. military aid and also clear backing from the U.S. On July 10th, a key event. At a White House meeting with the Ukrainians, Gordon Sondland, the U.S. ambassador to the European Union, states that Ukrainians need to reopen some investigations, according to multiple witnesses. Sondland, here on the right in this picture, after the meeting, testifies he does not remember saying that. But then National Security Advisor John Bolton erupts, according to other witnesses, calling the idea a drug deal and flagging it for White House lawyers. Right around that time, in mid-July, the United States freezes $391 million in aid to Ukraine. Several witnesses testify they were told this was by order of the president, directed through Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. All right, all first things first. Uh, Mulvaney hasn't commented on that idea, but has ardently defended the president. And I have news for everybody. Get over it. There's going to be political influence in foreign policy. This brings us to the event at the heart of all of this. The July 25th phone call between President Trump and President Zelensky. President Trump tells Zelensky that the United States has been very good to Ukraine. He then says, quote, I would like you to do us a favor, though. He goes on to say that he would like Zelensky to look into two things, the 2016 election and former Vice President Joe Biden and his son Hunter Biden's dealings in Ukraine. Among the officials on that call, an Army Lieutenant Colonel named Alexander Vindman, the top Ukraine expert on the National Security Council. He's usually behind the scenes. Now he is central. Vindman testifies that what he heard on the call was not proper, the president demanding that a foreign government investigate a U.S. citizen and political opponent. President Trump has said the call was about getting to the bottom of corruption in Ukraine. We are looking at corruption. We're not looking at uh, politics. We're looking at corruption. But Democrats say it is in that now famous call that President Trump personally tried to extort Ukraine. About a month later, on August 29th, a news report reveals to the public and to some members of Congress that the aid money was on hold. On September 1st, Vice President Pence meets in Warsaw with Zelensky. During that meeting, Pence brings up corruption. That same day, a key exchange between Gordon Sondland, the EU ambassador, and a top advisor to President Zelensky. Sondland tells the Ukrainian official that U.S. aid would likely not be provided until Ukraine made a public pledge to investigate the Bidens. One more date. By September 11th, following heavy congressional pressure, the military aid to Ukraine is taken off hold and sent. We do not know how long public hearings or any impeachment debate will last. We do know this is the fourth presidential impeachment investigation in history. And we're sure to learn more from all sides as it unfolds.